What's up? My name is Techno, but here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'll be showing you how to optimize not only your PC, but also Battlefield 2042 now that it's fully released. Obviously, I'm recording this first part a few days early, but when the game comes out, I'll record the actual in-game optimization to give you the latest up-to-date tips and what exactly you need to change and why. So before we begin, there'll be absolutely no snake oil in this video. Of course, all of the changes that you see will of course help you get higher FPS in game, whether it's a few or a heck ton more. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and begin. First of all, before we get to any kind of optimization, it's a very good idea to make sure that your Windows is up to date and of course your graphics card driver as well. Head across to NVIDIA or AMD's website, linked it down below, and download and then install the latest graphics driver for your computer. Then of course, if you haven't already, make sure your Windows is up to date fully using Windows Update. Super simple, so I won't go through that here. So to begin, let's go ahead and navigate to where the game is located. I have it on Steam, so I'll open it up. If you own it somewhere else, just head across to the install directory and find the main exe. So over here in Steam, I'll head across to Library, right-click Battlefield 2042, hover over Manage, and then click Browse Local Files. Of course, this folder is currently empty as the game hasn't released quite just yet, but I'll use Battlefield 4 as an example here. I'm not too sure why the exe isn't there quite just yet. It's stuck in this sort of half downloaded state here before the actual full release. So just take my word for it. You'll be looking for the main Battlefield 2042 EXE in that directory. All you have to do is right click it, then click properties, and inside of here, we'll navigate across to compatibility. In here, we'll be disabling full screen optimizations and then click change high DPI settings. In here, tick this box at the very bottom, OK, apply, and OK. So now that we've applied those changes to the main Battlefield 2042 EXE, simply click at the very top and we'll be copying the path here with Control C. Now, this is incredibly important, especially if you're on a laptop or a computer with multiple GPUs. Hit start and type in GPU, then open graphics settings. Inside of here, make sure hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is turned on. Then under graphics performance preference, make sure you have desktop app selected, then click browse. Inside of this new window, paste the location at the very top, hit enter, and we'll be double clicking on the main Battlefield 2042 EXE. In my case, I'm using Battlefield 4 as an example. I'll click options when it pops up on the list and then choose high performance and save. This will make sure it uses the best graphics card available in our computer, telling it we want the best performance. From here, I'll head back and then I'll head home. Then click the gaming button and on the Xbox Game Bar tab, make sure to turn this off unless you actually use some of the features here. Then head across to game mode and make sure that this is turned on as it'll give you a couple extra FPS. If you have used the game bar in the past, it's a good idea to disable the clip capture as quietly recording in the background all the time will drop your FPS, especially if you record on top of that with something like OBS, etc. You can open the game bar with start and G or you can manually open it yourself Xbox Game Bar. Inside of here, I'll head across to Settings, Capturing, and then make sure that this is turned off here. Record in the background while I'm playing a game. This is of course only if you have the Game Bar installed. Now let's go ahead and do some general cleaning on our computer, which is always a good idea. The more hard drive space you have, especially if you're really low on it, the better the FPS you can get. The same applies for SSDs. Head Start and we'll type in Cleanup, where we'll run this cleanup as administrator. Select C drive, the one with Windows, and then click OK. Wait for it to scan, and after it's scanned all the files on your computer, the temporary ones, you see a list of them here. I usually take absolutely everything except for a cycle bin, which I manually clean afterwards, and thumbnails down here, as I use tons of images on my PC, I don't want to wait for the thumbnails to regenerate. So with these two unchecked here, you should be able to select everything else, all of these temporary files, and then click OK, then delete files. Upon doing so, it'll delete all of these temporary files off of your computer, saving you a couple of megabytes to a couple of gigabytes. This is especially useful if you've only got a tiny bit of hard drive space left. On top of this, if you're installing the game to a different drive, simply relaunch it as admin, then select D drive, E drive, or whatever drive it is, instead of C, and go through the exact same steps here. Now, of course, something else you probably know by now is your computer has a limited amount of resources. The more programs running in the background, the fewer the FPS you'll actually get in game. Hold Control Shift and press Escape to open up the Windows Task Manager. You'll obviously want to close as many applications here as possible that you're not immediately using. Sort by CPU, GPU, and of course, memory over here, allowing the game to take up more resources. 
Then head across to the Startup tab, sort by status, and everything that's listed as enabled will start up when your computer boots up and logs in. It's a good idea to right click and disable anything unnecessary here as it's one less thing to close and it should even improve your startup time. If you're really advanced and quite a techie, head across to the Services tab, Open Services at the very bottom, and inside of here we'll be doing something similar. Sort by startup type, and everything listed as automatic starts up with your computer. You can double click on something and change it from automatic to manual or even disabled. Manual only lets it run when you open up an application that needs it, and disabled is not letting it run at all. By doing so, you can really optimize what processes start up with your computer, allowing it to start up faster and leaving more available for Battlefield 2042. On top of this, if you use a large number of overlays, Discord, Steam, etc., etc., every overlay that you have running will take away some of your performance, so it's a good idea to turn them down and run as few as possible. If you're running really short on GPU power while your CPU is running free, all you need to do is head into Discord, Steam, etc., running in the background and disable hardware acceleration. This way they'll use less of your GPU and more of your CPU instead, balancing things out, allowing you to squeeze a tiny bit of extra performance out of Battlefield 2042. On top of this, some laptops don't work very well with the internal display and their dedicated graphics cards, and they'll get much better FPS when an external monitor is plugged in and used instead for the game. So currently there's no launch options or anything like that that we can add, so I'll skip ahead a few days and show you the in-game optimization. My mic will definitely change, so don't worry about that too much. Okay, so here on my laptop, obviously A1050 is nowhere near powerful enough to run it, and I probably sound very different. So I'll go ahead and run through these settings as if I was on a much better computer. A1050 is nowhere near powerful enough to run this game. So of course full screen mode should be set to full screen for the best possible performance. Full screen resolution should match your display's resolution for the best looking game possible. Or of course a supported resolution. Refresh rate should also match your monitor's settings whether it's 144, 60, etc, etc. Field of view, vehicle third person, field of view, and ADS field of view all shouldn't affect FPS too much, though in some games it has been noted that with higher FOV you'll get higher FPS, even though that's counterintuitive. Scrolling down to graphics settings, brightness and HDR shouldn't affect your FPS in game. So skipping on to the next option, motion blur. This is something I always have off as it helps me see a lot better when it is off. If you have this on, it'll of course require more post-processing and of course take away some of your FPS. Chromatic aberration, film grain, vignette, and lens distortion are also all things you should turn to the off position in order to see better and of course for a tiny bit of extra performance in game. The graphics preset section over here has the main option as graphics quality. Changing this changes absolutely everything below this and you should try and get it to match whatever your graphics card is in your computer. For me it altered all the way down to low so that's where I'll be starting. Though you will need to push this across to custom in order to change anything down below this. Texture quality relies on how much VRAM your graphics card has. If you have a newer graphics card with lots of VRAM you can crank this up without losing any extra FPS. Texture filtering is anisotropic filtering and on new graphics cards you can usually push this all the way up without noticing any sort of major difference, especially if you have ample VRAM available. Lighting quality has to do with shadows, and of course the higher the setting is, the more FPS you're going to have taken away from you. This however doesn't change anything with RTX, those settings are much further down. Effect quality is something you need to crank down if you find yourself losing tons of FPS whenever there's explosions, shaking, exploding buildings, etc, etc. This is where all of those post-processing effects and other effects are. Post-process quality is for things like lighting, dimming your whole screen when an explosion happens, shaking, etc, etc. These usually don't have too much of an effect, but you can lower this if you find yourself losing FPS randomly as well. Mesh quality and terrain quality also rely on how much VRAM your graphics card has and should be set accordingly. The lower these two options are, the better FPS you'll get, though unlike anisotropic filtering, you do need to lower these qualities here as they will cause you to lose quite a bit of FPS. I would assume terrain quality to be the most demanding as these maps are absolutely massive. Undergrowth quality is something you can usually drop down without having to worry about losing too much from the actual gameplay. Of course you're not going to be staring at bushes in a Twitch FPS. Anti-aliasing post-processing should obviously be set as low as possible if you want as much FPS. This will remove jagged edges from objects etc etc and is usually something you can crank down if you're comfortable with seeing jagged edges once in a while. Ambient occlusion has to do with lighting once again and of course comes with a performance cost. Lowering this is a good idea. Then we get to the advanced section. Dynamic resolution scale will dynamically change your resolution while you're playing the game to try and match your FPS target. 
in my case 60, as that's what we set at the very top. The dynamic resolution scale refresh rate target tells your computer what it should try and aim for. The higher that this is, the more effect dynamic resolution scale will have on your game. DLSS and ray tracing ambient occlusion are two things that I don't have access to on a 1050. However, DLSS, the higher this option is, the lower the resolution your game will render at, but using AI it'll upscale it, and of course things will look plus minus the same, but the higher this option is, you'll start to notice more artifacting, however you'll also get a huge gain in FPS. Ray traced ambient occlusion should be set all the way to off if you value FPS at all. Having this on will result in a slightly prettier game, but I would definitely have this off, as ray tracing will still eat a ton of your FPS. Nvidia Reflex Low Latency should be enabled, but I've just tried to disable it here in the hopes that I can claw back any sort of playable game, but that's not happening on a 1050. You can of course push this to enabled plus boost if you'd like less input latency, though usually having this enabled is good enough. Then future frame rendering is something you should have on, but if you start experiencing heavy input lag, you need to turn this off. Vertical sync should always be off unless you're experiencing screen tearing as well, as having this on will cause you to have higher input lag. Finally, high fidelity object demand of course relies on VRAM and you should push this down to match your graphics card accordingly. Now other than that there's not really much else you can change on this list here to gain you higher FPS and of course if you're really struggling for FPS what you should return to is the full screen resolution here, though on a 1050 even on the lowest setting of 720p this game is far from playable and this recording is probably far from watchable either. But anyways, that's about it for this video. Thank you all for watching, my name is Ben Techno, be here for Troubleshoot, hopefully you found this video useful, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao!